Welcome into the Big Ten and Ten. I'm Vaughn Delzell, a college basketball analyst for NBC. And alongside me is a college basketball analyst for the Big Ten Network, NBC and Fox, Robbie Hummel, as you all know. We're going to break down recent upcoming happenings in the conference. So first, let's tip things off, Robbie, with some stock up, stock down teams. I'm going to ask you about the Nebraska Cornhuskers, maybe the most intriguing team in the Big Ten in the same week. They knocked off Purdue, the number one team in the country. Then they follow up with an 18-point loss on the road at Iowa. What do you think about the Cornhuskers, stock up or stock down? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go stock up. You know, I, I think that life on the road in this league is hard. It's disappointing that they weren't able to maybe carry on some of the momentum from the Purdue game because they shot the ball so well. Like, they shot the ball so, so well in that game. Uh, but I, I don't fault a team for losing to a quality opponent in, in a road environment i think that nebraska is probably going to be a team that that hangs around that 10 and 10 mark you know that 500 mark in league play yeah. but i i do like the way that fred hoiberg has gotten this team to play you know they, they shoot a good amount of threes they're going to depend on the three their percentage is kind of middle of the road or maybe even below that uh but they've shown that they can get hot like they did against purdue and and make some casey tomanaga is as electrifying as, as a player as we have in the Big Ten. But I just like the the toughness and the team mentality that these teams that Fred has had over the last, I would say, I'd give them two years. You know, last year they dealt with some real injuries and had a great February. You know, the amazing stat is that since February 1st of last year, they have the second best winning percentage of any team in the Big Ten. And I think that when you're talking, you're looking at Wisconsin, you're looking at Michigan State, you're looking at Illinois. There's some there's some really good programs in there that they they've won more games than they finished last year strong. They've gotten off to a great start this season. Uh, I, I love the the toughness, the five out mentality on offense, the way they guard you. Um, they they do play with an edge. They they can get on the glass better this year. So even though the the loss at Iowa is disappointing, huge win, huge huge win uh, against Purdue, and that certainly. Uh, is going to be something that I think can can carry them. We we talked a little bit about a little bit about Purdue, uh, Vaughn. Um, what what is your feeling about them? You know, interesting week where they go on the road to uh, Lincoln and and come away with a loss, but then get back to to business against Penn State and and really blew them out from the start. Yeah, they totally own Penn State in that game, and you have to win, like you say. Every Big Ten team has that advantage at home, uh, and it's very hard to win on the road. That's something Purdue needs to work on, but they need to take, as you would know. Uh, being a top team in the country, you have to take those double-digit losses sometimes, like at Nebraska or an OT loss at Northwestern to kind of teach these younger players, specifically the guards, how to play when Zach Eady's being double-teamed. I thought Minnesota laid a great foundation moving forward for Big Ten teams on how to limit Eady, uh, you know, but not everyone's going to be able to go 14 of 23 from three with nine turnovers. Uh, so I do want to see Purdue moving forward for force more turnovers, Defend the three a little better. They're the two downfalls for them. Only 11% turnover percentage on defense. The opponents in 40% from three. So you think those things will get better. I believe they will be able to win on the road in March. Uh, but it is a long road ahead. So we will still see about that. Uh, one team, though, that's been the most intriguing for me, and I got my money on tonight, Robbie, so hopefully they don't get me like Purdue got us last week. That's the aforementioned Minnesota and Golden Gophers who laid that foundation against ED. They have 12 wins this season with a chance to make a 13 yes. against Iowa tonight. Um, do you think their stock is up completely, or is this fool's gold uh, given who they've played? You know, I, I'm going to say that their, their stock is up. I think that when you look at their schedule, uh, you know, they, they should have beaten Missouri, led by 20 in a game back yeah. in November, and then just melted down. Had some real issues with turnovers. Um, that kind of gave that game away. I like their fight in the loss at Ohio State. Beat Nebraska at home. Big comeback without Dawson Garcia, um, without their best player in that second half. Ro sprained his ankle and wasn't able to go, but the, the big comeback was there. And then for them to have beaten Michigan on the road, beaten a Maryland team that, that just had some success on the road in Champaign uh, yesterday, and you know you lose Indiana, there's a lot of teams that are going to lose at Assembly Hall this year. That, that is one of the toughest places to play in this league. So I, I think that their guard play is much improved. You know, I, I like the way that Elijah Hawkins has run the team. Mike Mitchell has been a guy that can make a shot. Cam Christie has some real talent. Uh, for all pain has played great. You know, he, he has done some really positive things. And Dawson Garcia is one of the tougher matchups in the big 10 conference. I still think it's probably a stretch to think that this team can make the NCAA tournament, but this team has definitely taken a step in the right direction. Um, 
uh, playing for Ben Johnson. I think shooting the basketball has their guard play is so much better. Last year, the guards just they, they weren't good enough for for Minnesota. And you look at who was around their bigs; they just they just didn't get enough help. So I'm stock up on them. I, I like the way that they have played. I mentioned Maryland. You know, they they got a massive massive road win in a place where they they have not been good on the road in their two years under Kevin Willard. <laughs> Uh, but they have been good against Illinois, and they have had a lot of success against Illinois. Are you buying Maryland uh, after a big road win and actually winners of two straight coming off beating Michigan at home, and now that Illinois went on the road? So what I'm going to say is currently stock up, but ask me this question next week, stock down, Robert. <laughs> uh, you know, after watching the last three halves of basketball for Maryland uh, against Michigan, Illinois, you know, you, you, there's not much wrong with them. Uh, but with the road trip to Northwestern and a home game versus Michigan State on deck, I could see them going 0-2 in those spots. They're a team that's just not shooting the three well. I mean, they rank bottom 25 in the country, but they have the 16th rate of defensive efficiency. We know how hard it is to win on the road. They did that against Illinois, and I did not expect that. I was on Illinois first half and full game. So, you know, they surprised me. They look good right now. But I have my doubts with this Maryland team moving forward. So I definitely will say, uh, you know, stock up for the for the time being. But um, I would be willing to sell my stock now. It's a it's a uh, hold for now. Hold for now. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Hold for a few days and then sell it at its highest point here. Yeah. Um, so let me ask you about Illinois, because obviously I had a lot of high hopes for them entering that game at home. They lost against Maryland. Still don't have Terrence Shannon Jr. They started the season nine and two with him, but are now two and three without him. Uh, is it time to uh, pers- push the emergency button? I'm not pressing the emergency button, but I am saying stock down because I think that the teams that are good and have real ambition to win the league don't lose a home game like that. I just didn't think yeah. they were hooked up. I didn't think they executed well. I think the fact that they decided to go small and then not double Julian Reese was a super mistake. And I just think that with some of Maryland's shooting issues – not stopping the ball when Jameer Young is driving it is is another mistake. You know, I, I thought they did not execute a solid game plan to play against a Maryland Terrapins team that is deficient in shooting the basketball from three. Um, so I, I'm going stock down for the time being. They, you know, you lose a home game and now you got to make it up on the road. They go to Michigan and Michigan's a team that has had their issues. It sounds like Doug McDaniel will play in the home games. Um, so that, that's that's a massive game for them. Uh, then they, they come home and play Rutgers and then they got to go back on the road and play at Northwestern. And I know they handle Northwestern at home, but it's a different beast when you're going on the road in this league. So in that, that game, that rivalry of Illinois and Northwestern has, has been one where really crazy things can happen. So disappointed in their execution. Uh, I, I do think that they, for the most part outside, and if you would ask me this, uh, after the Michigan state game, I'd be like, stock up. (laughs) <laughs> like, you know, yeah. Yeah. seeing them play at Purdue and the way that they hung in there for that one. And then to beat Michigan State in a really competitive close game at home, I, I liked what they were doing. But I, I am really disappointed that this group maybe just didn't have, I don't know if it's maturity is the right word, or just didn't come out ready to play. You, know, you, you can't do that in this league. Losing Terrence Shannon is, is such a big loss. Damask has been phenomenal. You know, he as of yesterday, he was second in conference play and scoring at 22 a game kid coming up from Southern Illinois. That is, that's really impressive. But I I do think that they, they just, I I was shocked that they lost that game yesterday. I I really was like their team. This could be stock up in a week, but as of now, I'm, I'm really bummed out about the way that they played yesterday. A lot can change in a week, especially in the big 10 conference with these teams going on the road and back home. But uh, yeah, I, I agree. Ask Purdue tough to win at Northwestern. I'm expecting Illinois to drop that game. That's one that I have circled on my calendar as well. Got to make my money back, Robbie. Uh, but before go. I let you go and we wrap up, uh, you got a lot of games on your on your schedule this week. What are you looking forward to in the Big Ten? Any teams, players you're paying close attention to? Well, I, I think you always the, – the, the elite rivalries in this conference are always phenomenal drama. And, you know, you've got Purdue going into Assembly Hall tomorrow, which is going to be – Purdue, Indiana is – I played in it. I got to experience for myself. It feels different than any game you play. You, know, you walk into that building, and I'm sure it's the same when Indiana comes to, to Mackey Arena, but when Purdue goes to Assembly Hall, it it, it doesn't feel the same as the other games. So uh, it, it should be a war. A um, lot to play for for Indiana. I think that they still have uh, some things to to prove on their resume if they want to make the NCAA tournament. 
but yeah, I, I've got that one circled. And that's actually, it's a huge week for Indiana. I mean, you get Purdue and Wisconsin, and they have had Two top teams. little to no success at the Kohl Center in the last, you know, 15, 16, 17 years. So um, huge, huge week for them, huge opportunities playing the two best teams in the league, but not easy when uh, Purdue, who could be the number one team in the country this afternoon still, I don't know if they will be. Number one could be coming into your building. Uh, and then you go to Wisconsin, who is is one of the top two teams in the league as well. Yeah, I have a feeling Indiana will be a big topic of discussion next week uh, when we cover the Big Ten and Ten once yeah. again. So I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to that. And I'll end it with this, Robbie. There is no true number one in college basketball this year. No I think it is a wide open year. So I'm looking forward to see if some of the Big Ten can make a run. Uh, make sure to follow Robbie Hummel and myself on X for more college basketball content. Make sure you check out Robbie on the sidelines calling games as well. Enjoy the Big Ten basketball slate this week. It's going to be a good one, everyone.